Have you ever thought to yourself, wow, I want to listen to Vic answer questions for 30 minutes and participate in a giveaway? Well, if either of those things sound pretty cool to you, I would go ahead and watch this lovely Q&A that's going to start right now. I asked for the questions at 15k, and now I'm giving them back to you at 16k. Thank you for the support, and here we go. So, we're starting strong. <laughs> the, the first one that I see when I look is 07 Actual, who asks, Anyone else upset that after Final Fest, absolutely nobody said, Turns out, what's really off the hook is the friends we made along the way? I don't even have an answer to this one. I just really liked it. Ariel asks, if you could add five new things to Splatoon 3, what would they be, excluding idols and DLC? Ranking system right now? It's, it's not so good. If they could make it vaguely based on win rate, it would be much better, so much faster. So, f fix the ranks. And you could never have enough clothes. So, I mean, I would just add more clothes. And then, we ought to go, like, Animal Crossing up in Splatoon. Like, just give us houses. They had the house as a loading screen in Splatoon 1. So how about in Splatoon 3, we get houses, please. And then honestly, I would just, uh, <laughs> I would just want Kraken and Echo Locator back. Then I'd be happy. Army asks, do you read the Splatoon manga? Actually, I do. I, um, I'm not caught up. I think right now I'm up to where they introduce Hachi. I've, I've seen pieces and bits online. You can actually read a majority of the Splatoon manga, like, for free online. Like, there's translations of it, which I'm sure you've done if you're asking me this question, but... It's really good, and if I have more time, I would love to actually catch up and read the rest of it, honestly. Scent asks, how did you get to where you are today? Like, who did you watch? And how can I get better at aiming? Well, to do the aiming part first, the only way to really get better at aiming is to practice. You don't just magically get better at aiming. What you have to do is, I, I know this sounds dumb, but when you're playing a game, you have to make sure you're aiming with the reticle. There are a lot of people, and I used to do this too, where you get so focused on watching yourself, because it's a third-person game, that you look at your inkling shooting the gun instead of looking at where you're aiming. And people that I watched, I've, uh, I've been actively watching Splatoon since 2016. And I used to watch lovely people like Dude, of course. I watched uh, a lot of Twitch. Like, Fuzzy and Fuchsia, watching Splatoon 1, having a good time, fantastic game, led into watching Squidstorm 2016, and then everything just took off from there. I if I hadn't gotten into watching, like, LAN events, I don't know if I'd be doing this right now. So, thanks! A strap boy asks, if a toothbrush wasn't a toothbrush, what'd it be? It'd be a pointy... a, a pointy mouth scrubby tool. Bamboo asks, what is your favorite Pokemon and shiny Pokemon? Uh, Flygon and shiny Flygon. <laughs> In all seriousness, though, uh, my favorite Pokemon is Cyndaquil. And if I had to pick a really good shine, it actually probably would be like, like Mareep. Mareep is a good boy. Shiny Mareep? Ugh. Yes. Excellent. Shiny Celebi? Ooh. Yes, perfect! Any of them that they become shiny and they have some like extra like pastel color added or like a pink, I'm in for it. Barry Jenkins asks, what is your favorite song? Now this is like actually a super easy one for me. I actually really love Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah. It uh, <laughs> it kind of implanted its way into my life back in 10th grade because we went on a trip to go to upstate New York and we listened to a choir uh, sing the song while we were there, and I was like, this is my song now. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm just gonna take this song and go learn it, and oh my god, the, the Hallelujah is still one of my favorite songs. Like, anytime I hear it anywhere, I'm like, oh, that's, that's, that's the song that I like. <laughs> uh, Beast Mode asks, do you have any advice for reaching X rank from S or S plus zero? Uh, I would say the biggest difference between a lot of players in S rank versus X rank is how much they watch what's going on. A, uh, one of the key things you really have to do is you need to pay attention to the game. It's, like, tower control isn't just the team deathmatch or just being on the objective. Like, if you know that the enemy team has, like, three specials up, you should try and stop them from pushing before you get on the tower. So, make sure to pay attention to what the team on the other side is doing first and then make your moves. If you plan accordingly, you're gonna win a lot more. 
Uh, Bird Boy asks, what's your favorite Mario Kart? Uh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, because that's the only one that I own. Woo! Sierra asks, the most slash least painful ad to get footage for? Mmm, the, probably the most painful one would definitely be for the E-Leader. I made an E-Leader ad, like, a good chunk of months ago. And that one was a real doozy, because if you guys don't know, I'm I'm not the best at chargers. <laughs> it took a little while, but I uh I purposely picked a rotation where I knew I could pull it off. It was like Wahoo World, Manta Maria, Rainmaker. So all I had to kind of do was stand in the right spots and kind of get people as they walked by. Maybe one of the easiest one would be one of the slasher ones, or maybe the ad for the 52 gal, because uh for the people that don't know, the time that I recorded the 52 gal ad was. <laughs> I think the first time that I got to top 500 in a ranked mode, I played the, the first night of Clam Blitz and immediately blasted into 2400, like, while playing 52. And I was like, wait a minute. I'm gonna have to make an ad now. <laughs> so I did. Uh, Syndicate asks, are you actually a rat in disguise? Comment account says, I got a few questions. For one, how do you manage to do it all? Streams, cons, a full-time job, and all the rest? Ah, uh, it's called is scheduling. I Every time that I have an idea for a video, I at least write down the gist of the idea down somewhere, that's why I can't forget about it. Like, uh, like the ad videos that I make, the first time that I made an ad, it was actually the one for the Rapid Blaster Pro, but I hated it. <laughs> so I just kind of kept it in a, uh, in a Word document for a while and forgot about it. And when the Blah Blobber came out, I was like, you know what? You know what? I'm gonna imitate what I did for this script. But, I'm gonna try it for the Blah Blobber. And the, let's just say that one definitely kind of worked out, since it's still my number one video on the channel. So, uh, you're welcome. And, uh, strawberry ice cream can go. That's unnecessary. <laughs> uh, Fang asks, how do you stay so positive? One thing I really like about you is that you always have a good mindset when playing. Well, uh, on the stream, I guess I'm not gonna really get mad anyway. When you're playing in solo queue, for example, a lot of people go into solo queue because they're trying to learn something new, or they're trying to practice. Most people going to solo queue, unless they're like top tier competitive players, are going to make like, a lot of mistakes. Because every game is different, there's no communication, there's no way of knowing your teammates' playstyles, people aren't going to be like, perfectly coordinated with each other until you reach a really high level, and even then it's still not guaranteed. So. When you have all these people trying out new strategies, playing new weapons maybe, trying to get in a couple of games in the middle of a tournament, but you know, they're they're used to their other mindset they were using. It's it's just a disaster. So instead of getting worked up about it, I try to focus on what I'm doing, right and wrong, and gain something out of every match. Maybe I shouldn't have gotten so close to their end zap so many times because I know that he can out aggress me at that range or Maybe I have to stop holding forward and just hoping the sniper won't get me, which I do like all the time. If you become aware of your flaws, you can get better without getting mad. And at the same time, you can be aware of what you do right. You can find somebody you really like to watch, right? And you can try and imitate the way they play and then incorporate your style into it. And that'll help you get better and then you might be satisfied. That's, uh, that's what I got about that. That's how I got better. I uh, walked around for like a month playing dual squelcher, like Fuzzy's Tenetech, for goodness sake. So you know what? There's always periods of improvement. Good luck. Again with the <laughs> again with the toothbrushes. What Gary and Pam asks? What color is your toothbrush? I've got two toothbrushes, depending on where I'm brushing my teeth. I know one is green. I forget what color the other one is. A goose the coder asks, how do you make your voice so pretty? I don't know what you're talking about! In all seriousness though, uh, I guess... I guess, uh, I guess when it comes to content, I've gotten used to doing content in this, like, retail voice. Like, I'm, like, I'm still working at my old job that I don't work at anymore. Like, when you work in retail, you want to be as, like, people-pleasing as possible. Like, you want to, you want to be like, oh, like, oh, yes, I'm here to help you today. I want to make sure that everything goes your way, and I'm going to also make sure to sell you some stuff. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. And besides, as a Long Islander, I just tend to speak kind of fast anyway. So I just, I just have a giggle, have a little bit of fun, and speak the way I want to speak. And if people like it, I guess I don't have any reason to change. So thank you. 
a grant asks, have you ever, <laughs> oh, <laughs> are you ever going to sing professionally? It'd be, <laughs> it'd be fun to record an audiobook sometime. Uh, one time on the server, I was supposed to read off the entirety of the B-movie script, but I never got around to that one, so, uh, I guess if, if you want me to read off the B-movie script, I could still do that sometime. <laughs> We never, uh, it was a joke that I had with a bunch of people really early on, and then it just never came into fruition. Like, I remember I wanted to do it, and I can't remember why we didn't get there, but maybe someday. And singing professionally, I don't really know if it's in the books right now, but maybe I'll come back a year from now and find out that I've made more songs. Because I do want to make more songs, I want to sing more stuff and have a fun time. Most of the singing that I do, I keep it to Twitter, I'll, uh... I can link a, uh, a little thing from the other day, actually, in the description below, if you want to hear me sing one of the songs from Steven Universe's new movie, because that was fun. But, yeah, uh, singing is good. I keep it on the DL. I mostly break into song in the middle of streams, as you'd know, Grant. So, uh, if you guys ever want me to sing a little tune, I probably could. Hertz asks, what's the worst job that Sheldon has given you? All right, all right, all right, Hertz. Let's, let's be real here. Working for Sheldon is an entire adventure in and of itself. Come on, you're, you're working with weapons, like, all day! If Sheldon has any kind of cool, like, things that he finds, any new scrolls, he, I get to see them first! Like, like, you know, we almost had Burst Bomb Slosher, and we almost had Burst Bomb Clash Blaster, but, but then Sheldon was like, ah, ba ba and I was like, okay, I guess, Sheldon. But, uh, I would say the worst thing that's ever happened in the shop was, uh, one time in the storage area, a few boxes of dapple doolies fell from up top, right? And if you don't know, Sheldon is pretty characteristically short. So when you have all these doolies fall down, and mind you, it wasn't like just like dapple doolies. It was like dapple doolies, dapple doo nouveaus, and like the clear ones too. So you got like three different kinds of dapples scuttered all over the floor, ink all over the place. And you know, you know who's got to pick up those used doolies and get them back on the shelf? Me. It's always me. But... It's what you get when you work in the store by yourself sometimes, I guess, right? That's probably one of the worst. Even though I didn't do it, it was a shelf, but, you know, it's just easier if we just fix it before Sheldon comes back. Don't tell Sheldon, please. Just, just please don't tell him. Hoodie Dragon asks, did you work anywhere else before Sheldon's? Hmm, my first job, huh? Okay, 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 so. You know Moray Towers, right? Moray Towers isn't just a battlefield. People also come to park their cars. It's a big old garage, right? People gotta go and work for the day. But, you know, when you work something that big, you need to have receptionists for the area, like in case someone has a problem. And, uh, I was one of those. Whenever people needed to get something done, like they needed to set something up, or, you know, they need, they misplaced their ticket for the third time this week, oh my god, I would just, uh, I would go and I would walk over with them and I would help them find their stuff and we'd make sure they got off that so they could go drive to work or, you know, come back in at night or whatever. The amount of times that I had to, like, fix the, the thingy that so people could come back inside, the little parking booth, too many, too many. But that's besides the fact. Most of the time, it'd be pretty chill. I had a couple of younger Inklings I would hang out with and you know what? I, I hope they're doing good. I heard one of them actually started working for Annie recently, so that's, I'm, I'm proud of her. But... I'm really happy with where I am now. I'm really happy to work for Sheldon. Interstellar Kel just asks, Cheese? Please? Iron Wolf asks, A favorite and least favorite weapons. Uh, well, my favorite three are the Jet Squelcher, custom, I mean, <laughs> the uh, Sloshing Machine, and the Slosher, especially the Slosher Deco. If I had to pick a couple that I hated with a passion, I guess I'm not really the biggest fan of the squeezer, just because it kind of hurts to use. And, uh, any kind of scoped sniper kind of just hurts my pride more than anything else. <laughs> it's just that I'm bad. Uh, Jamie asks, C can you help me with my math homework? O okay, the problem I'm stuck on is 3i is less than 9u. Can you simplify it for me? Please, Vic, it's due tomorrow. Mmm, so d do you still need help with the homework? Because it's, uh... It's it's been a few weeks. <laughs> Jay asks, hey, hey Vic, <laughs> on, a, on a scale of one to circle, <laughs> what's the correct color of the alphabet? Blue cheese. Kabila Pak says, do you have a role in the competitive scene? Backline aggro anchor. 
Um, I would say I usually like to play backline or midline weapons more than anything else. Just because, as I mentioned before, I do like playing a lot of jet. I do like playing, like, mid-range sloshers. And then I like to dabble in junior. I'm not the best aggro because I kind of grew into the game playing backline. So I'm a little bit of a baby when it comes to actually pushing up way too hard. I'm happy to be where I am. Casero asks, favorite anime and favorite character from that anime? I would have to go probably with Inuyasha. I grew up watching Inuyasha at 5 a.m. at my grandparents' house when we'd sleep over. And I really loved Sango. Karkitz asks, what advice do you have for people who are interested in joining the competitive scene? If you want to get into the competitive scene, the first thing that you really can do to help yourself improve is just to start watching tournaments. Like, every view of a tournament that you put in is, like, is like time that you're going to be learning something new. Like, listening to people commentate on a tournament match, you're going to gain something from it. You're going to listen to them speak, and you're going to be like, oh, I didn't know that thing. Or maybe you'll be like, oh, I didn't think about doing it like that. Or maybe you'll be like, oh, I didn't think about standing there when I was playing this weapon. And you'll quickly get better just because you're watching these people who are probably better than you or I, like, going ham. When you're playing in solo queue, like, think about the callouts. Be like, oh, there's a sniper on right serial right now. Like, just taking the time to try and understand the game, even when you're not playing at a competitive point, can help you reach that competitive point, if that makes sense. I would say you just have to play smart without exhausting yourself, and you'll get better much faster than just, you know, throwing 300 hours in, just running around willy-nilly. Koala Koalix asks, Can you make a tutorial again on how to roll the R? It was so good on Twitter, I want to hear it again. Alright. If you want to know how to roll your R's, you have to think about the number 3. But when you say the number 3, you can work your way into rolling your R's. Like, 3. Three. Three. Get it? Like, three. <laughs> you just go, three. It, it's just, it's the easiest way. Because to roll your R, you gotta make the tip of your tongue just kinda, kinda do a little tap dance on your face, if that makes sense. So like, three. Thrrr, and it works. That's, that's about all there is to it. La Lechusa asks, what's your favorite video? Hmm, I... <laughs> Maybe the Dapple Dooley's ad? That one not only did really well, but it was just full of dumb jokes. And I remember going on Twitter before and like having a laugh, being like, haha, what if I just put so many puns in this one? And I was just like dropping them on Twitter. And a couple of my friends were like, no, Vic, no, Vic, stop. And I was like, <laughs> Leprechaun asks, what is your favorite TV show? Uh, if I had to pick a TV show from my childhood? It would probably be Mythbusters. I really loved watching any kind of videos like that. I mean, you never knew what you were watching. Were they gonna tie a bunch of balloons to a kid and see if they could lift him off the ground? Were they gonna try to take a piece of paper and fold it more than seven times? Like, you just, you never knew what you were getting into with Mythbusters. And it was just great. And sometimes they would just make things explode instead. So it, it was just always really fun to watch. Levin says, hey, nice job. Any future plans for channel? Tips on getting started, actual Splatoon main. In the future for the channel, I am going to keep doing the ads, but I want to mix it up with more Splatoon content and hopefully some singing too. So those are kind of the plans right now. I'm also going to introduce Pokemon content to the channel once Pokemon Sword and Shield comes out. And that's, that's kind of like the preliminary stuff right now. And if you want to get started making your own content, the, the best advice I have for you is just start. I, uh, it took me from 2017 going into 2018 to kind of figure out what I wanted to do. Once you kind of know what you might want to do, just start doing it. Start building an archive of content. Like, if they jump on your channel and you only have one video, they don't have anything else to watch. But if you got, like, ten videos and, like, the most recent five are good, or good enough for your standards, which I'm sure they're always improving, like, that you're always going to get better the more content you make, then people always have something to look forward to. Like, you pull people in by showing what you've got and letting people find it, if that makes sense. Mango Pina says, congrats. Okay, so have you seen any of the Harry Potter movies? If so, what house are you? I'm Hufflepuff? I am actually Hufflepuff too. I took the quiz like years ago and was Hufflepuff. I don't know if it would be different now, but I was back then. And do I like any Kensa weapons? 
I really like the Kensa machine, and I would really like to learn the Kensa Jr. I think out of the out of all of them. Michael sends his congratulations and then asks, "What prompted you to make Splatoon content or really YouTube content in the first place?" Uh, well, okay, so I didn't start making content until 2017, which was near the end of Splatoon 1's lifespan. What happened is in 2016, I really loved watching competitive content, and I was like, I don't want to be bad anymore, or at least I don't want to be just decent, I want to get better. And the way that I thought I could get better was by recording my own gameplay and watching it back. So I got a capture card. And I was planning on, like, uploading little clips from time to time, you know, like, normal competitive player stuff. Upload a few matches, be able to watch them in my spare time, and get better at my own pace. And it worked! I didn't really upload too much, but I got better, and I joined a team, and as I improved, I kept making little videos. They weren't anything special, and you can see all of them still. Really, it's the competitive community that gave me my start, and I still play competitively to this day, so it worked out. The the final like nail on the head though was a uh, Squid Storm in 2017, like way after I started making content. When I went to Squid Storm, I like I met people that made me want to do more, and that's why I came into 2018 with like such a running start. I I was in between like semesters of college. I was going into like the last semester before graduate school and all that jazz, and I was like, no 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 no. Oh wait no, that actually it was my first semester of graduate school. And I was like, no, 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 no. We're gonna take this a different way. And I started streaming instead of just making random videos. And everything kind of fell into place after that. OctoTurtle asks, do you prefer Splatoon over any other game? Or do you like one that's closer to your heart? Uh, I mean, right now, Splatoon is probably <laughs> number one. But if I had to pick a game that I've put the most time into... It would either be like Kirby Air Ride or Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. I really loved Oras, and I spent probably as much time and effort in Oras, like like raising Pokemon and hanging out on Twitch, as I have probably for Splatoon. Poppy asks, Elbow Reveal. Well, if you believe really hard, you can almost see the elbow through the shirt. But like, you know what you can see? You can see my face. <laughs> I think that's probably probably something you want a little bit more than the elbow, but I, I, don't, I don't know, man. I, I might be wrong. M maybe, maybe you just really want the elbow. Patrick asks, do I have any pets? Yes, I have three cats and two dogs. We have a lot going on. Uh, hopefully future Victoria is putting pictures of all my animals on the screen right now for you. Hooray! Pixelated Boy asks, how does one, as the kids say these days, get good? I think I answered this earlier, so I believe in you. Just keep trying. And if I could play any instrument, I would really, really like to play the guitar. We own at least one guitar, we might even have two in the house. And I can't play either of them, even though we actually did get one tuned. I can play the piano, but I would really like to play the guitar. Salty asks, how much is Sheldon paying you to make those ads for him? Uh, actually, every time someone comes in and buys a weapon, I get an entire 1% of the commission. And you know what? That really adds up over time. Sans a skeleton says, sans or papyrus, lemon or lime, and uh, a, a, whole, a whole bunch of other questions that I think we're gonna skip. You know what, actually, looking at the bottom here, we're, we're not gonna skip it. Here you go, here you go. I, I'll just answer them like that. Give you a couple of seconds to read them off, and bye bye Splatastic asks, what is your favorite gun in the whole of Splatoon or Splatoon 2? Um, my favorite gun in Splatoon would probably be the custom jet in Splatoon 1. Because not only did you have the burst bomb that it has now, but you also had the Kraken! And I would live and die for Kraken. I would just... <laughs> Bluefin Depot Tower Control Kraken. It would either go really well for you or really bad. And it was just always funny to play it. And uh, right now, I believe that I play at three and a half motion and two and a half sticks, or the other way around. One of those two. Both positive. Vapor Ace asks, how do you get recruited at Ammo Nights? Asking for a friend. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Um, if you want to get recruited to Ammo Nights these days, it's a little bit more difficult. I happened to walk in when Sheldon was really desperate for work. I, I just took one interview and he, he took me in right away and it was really nice because I didn't expect that at all. 
But uh, these days, because including me and our other two interns, the shop is pretty good right now. You might have to wait for one of the interns' time to run out, and then you could probably sneak your way in. A Vmonator asks, what's your favorite stream moment and why? Well, uh, definitely up there <laughs> is the rats thing, because I did make a, a, a stream moment out of that particular one. If you've never seen that video, I'll uh, lovingly plug that one in the description too, because it's a really good video, honestly. Mm, and besides that, I remember in a really old Sunday fun day, there was a uh, there was a time where the entire stream chat kind of descended into everyone making fake clickbait titles, and I just spent like a good ten minutes reading them off. That was <laughs> that was pretty good. I like being able to use my voice for stupid dumb things like uh like. <laughs> Q and A channel gone wrong? N no more questions to answer? Like things like that. It's just it's just fun. And uh, one time I was streaming, and my sister Izzy came down and just started blasting Megalovania on her phone. That was that was like back when I was still using my laptop, and I think I I don't know if I even had a good microphone yet, but I just remember that because the entire stream went crazy laughing at the Megalovania. Anything that happens that like makes the stream chat smile is a good moment to me. Yan asks, what is a weapon you would like to main but aren't good at? Snipes. Definitely snipes. Especially if I could get good at the, uh, the fire fin splatter scope in particular. Because I would love to be a super useful backline. I respect snipers because they have to have so much to do their job. Like, to snipe well, you can't just have good aim, which I don't have anyway. But, uh, you have to know where people are going to be. Becoming a sniper main increases your skill at the game, in my opinion, significantly faster than maining anything else in particular. Because you have to learn how people play. Otherwise, you're not going to be a good snipe. That's that's the bottom line. So if you want to get better at the game fast, try to learn to snipe. Because it really helps. Because you have to be aware. Wither Games asks, how's Bob? Bob is always doing good. I, uh, <laughs> I don't know if you saw, but I actually have a, a physical Bob now. I took a picture of him on Twitter because I won him during a game. And, uh, I'll show you right now here on the screen me, uh, winning the boy and a good picture that I have with him. Just like that. Because <laughs> it was great. I was, I didn't know that they had bob bombs at this particular arcade. But it just worked out really well, and I was so happy. Red Panda Randomness says, Favorite YouTuber? Jax Films. I really love Jax Films' style of humor. I really love the things that he does. And it kind of shows, probably sometimes, in the things that I make. He just, his content just feels really nice. It feels real. And you want to be like that. I like Jack a lot. And now, uh, we got a little word from our sponsors. A.K.A. Me. Oh, wait a minute. What's that? You like... <laughs> You like stickers? Because I might be giving away some stickers if you know what I mean. Woo! I'm going to give away 10 of them to people in the comments. All you have to do is follow the instructions on the screen. Just share any kind of happy memory you have from Splatoon or Splatoon 2. And, you know, just, just how much you like the game, honestly. Just tell me something happy about your Splatoon experience. We want to fill this chat with very positive emotions. So let's do that, all right? That's all you gotta do. If you actually stuck around to the end of this <laughs> to hear about the sticker giveaway, thank you very much, honestly. Uh, the amount of support that I've had up to this point has been just kooky, crazy, insane, and I never would have expected it. Like, I if I told myself, like, going into graduate school that this is what I would be doing with my spare time, I would have laughed. I would have been like, no, 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 no. It's, it's January 2018. I've got not even 200 subscribers. I'm just playing Splatoon 2 competitively on the side with my friends. And, you know, nothing really is going to come out of this. I would be, like, crazy wrong. I would have never expected what is, what is happening now. And it's just wild to think about how much things have changed and how I have an entire audience that I have to make sure is happy. And I'll always keep trying to do that, because I this is what I'm doing now. I work essentially two jobs, in a way, because I work my day job, and I do this job. And as long as you're willing to keep on watching, I'm willing to keep on making.
thank you for being on the ride for as long as you have, whether you subscribed yesterday, whether you're subscribing to this video right now because you were like, wow, it's 30 minute Q&A, it's time to watch. Or if you've been subscribed for however long, whether you're from the Marina Times or earlier, or maybe you found me through the ads, or maybe you found me through a random guide. I don't know, man. You found me through Octo Expansion because people really like that. No matter when you started, you're still a fan now, and I really appreciate that. So, have a nice day, and thank you for watching! Like, uh, just go- what I can do is, uh, after this today, I'll go over and I'll ask Sheldon for you. I'll figure it out. I'll see if- when there's gonna be an open spot, and I'll let you know. I'll send you a, a sick, nasty letter in the mail, and get this all sorted out, Vapor Ace.